Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have a very, very boring, but very important thing to talk to you about, and that is taxes. Specifically taxes in the U.S. for musicians. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you're making money as a musician, theoretically you should be paying taxes. And so, I'm going to try to describe to you a little bit today about when I pay taxes and how I do it and some of the deductions that you can use as a musician. Um, this is not meant to be exhaustive or authoritative. You should not take advice from me. I'm not an accountant. I'm not qualified at all. I'm probably not even wearing pants right now. But um, I just want to share some of my experiences filing taxes as a musician. Um, now. This only refers to the U.S. I don't know how they do it in other countries, so good luck. I have no idea. Um, but the basic rule is that if you make money, you have to pay taxes. Um, if you've got a regular day job, you probably get your tax statement sent to you every year at the beginning of the following year. So the money that you made in 2017, you'll receive a W-2 form in the beginning of 2018. Um, but the, music, the money you make from music is usually different. You're usually paid with a Form 1099, which is basically an independent contractor type form. So if you are selling your music on Pond5, for example, you need to register with them. You fill out a 1099 form. Uh, they'll send you, at the, end of, at the beginning of the following year, they'll send you um, a statement basically with all your taxable information on it and then you'll put that into your accounting software, um, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, or if you're playing a gig uh, at a reputable location, they'll have you actually fill out a form before you play or before they pay you. Um, sometimes it's after sound check, sometimes it's after the gig, but reputable places will make you fill out a form. Um, and then at the end of the year, you're gonna pay taxes on that. Now, even if they don't make you pay out, fill out a form and you're getting paid for your gig under the table, you are theoretically supposed to report that income. So that's sort of the big picture. What type of income do you have to report? That's 1099 income. Um, and this is only talking about income taxes as a musician. There's a few other types, but we're not going to get into that here. Um, so if you've earned 1099 income, uh, as a musician, whether or not you've refer, received a 1099 form, then you're going to file taxes uh, in addition to your regular, it'll all be on the same sort of form, but this is in addition to your regular income. So um, what you're going to need to do over the course of the year, and what hopefully you have been doing, is both keeping track of all the money you earned as a musician, uh, often the 1099 forms at the end of the year help, but anything under the table, also, hopefully you've kept track of that so you can report it at the end of the year. Um, then you're also going to want to keep track of your expenses so that you can deduct your expenses and other deductions from that 1099 income and hopefully reduce your tax burden. Um, and so we'll get to some of those deductions in a minute. But what I want to talk about is how to track your information, uh, your expenses and your income. I use a free website called mint.com, M-I-N-T. Dot com. Uh, I use it to track my personal finances and my business. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is when you get in there, set up your Mint account and link it to your credit cards and your bank account and your debit account and all of that. And then every week or so, just like on a Saturday or Sunday, take like four or five minutes to go through any transactions you had that past week and tag them as either an expense or an income related to your music business. This bookkeeping for musicians is really important because I promise you, you're not going to remember what a $30 charge to Amazon was a year later unless you mark it down as being related to business, you know, and related to, you know, buying a DI box. There's a little space you can leave a comment to yourself about what each transaction was. Um, and that's really helpful down the line when you want to actually figure out what you spent your money on when you're filling out your taxes. Um, it's also important that you have to keep receipts for everything. Uh, so find a way to store them. It usually is just easiest to do everything digitally or with a credit card, and that sort of leaves a record. 
but the quickest way of just tallying everything up is to use Mint because you can actually search or tag things and pull up things by the tag um, when it comes to actual tax time. So then to actually fill out my taxes, I've been using TurboTax. Uh, it's worked great for me for the past few years. I don't hire an accountant for this. Um, TurboTax pretty much walks you through it. Uh, you need to not use the regular version, but there's like a home and small business version that will have the deductions and the options that you need. Um, and there's an affiliate link down below if you want to click through and buy it through my uh, link. You get a little I I get a little kickback from Amazon, but um, it's the, it's what I use to do my taxes. I've been happy with it. Um, it's not super complicated to do if you've been keeping track of all of your expenses, and it'll walk you through everything. Um, I'm not a tax expert, so I can't help with any questions that you might have about TurboTax, but TurboTax has always been able to answer my questions based on uh, the help features built into the software. So now that you know whether or not you need to pay taxes and you know whether or not you've been what your expenses are and what your you know income is, then it's time to actually think about deductions. So if you have qualified expenses as a musician, you can use that to decrease or even eliminate the amount of income tax you should have to pay. So if you earned $1,000 as a musician and you spent $1,000 on a guitar, um, or you had $1,000 worth of expenses because it doesn't work quite like that because you might depreciate the guitar, but uh, that'll TurboTax will handle all of that. But if you had $1,000 of expenses in the year and $1,000 of income on the year, then you wouldn't owe any taxes for the 1099 portion of your income. Now, this doesn't actually reduce your W-2 income. So if you just got a regular day job and you spend $1,000 on a guitar, um, you don't get to decrease your regular income tax earnings. This only works against decreasing your musician earnings. Um, and so that's why you need to keep track of things, but also why you need to use the software to really figure out what things are. So let's talk about some of the most popular deductions. Um, and let me also say right now, I've got a much more detailed written post. Uh, there's a link to that down below. Uh, it'll walk you through these things in a little more detail. Um, but you can deduct the expenses of your musical equipment, you know, whether it's plugins, whether it's software, whether it's hardware. <laughs> Excuse me. You can also, you know, deduct the cost of getting your guitars like set up or troubleshooting, you know, tech support for your software, getting repairs, all of that. Strings, name it, you name it. So uh, basically, it's just further encouragement to become a total gear slut because you can be like, oh, well, I get to write it off. Um, the next thing you can, the broad category of things you can sort of deduct include educational expenses. And so those are things like, let's say you sign up for an online course, like Mix with the Masters, um, Dueling Mixes, or My Music Licensing course. Those are all tax deductible. Or if you like subscribe to, you know, um, a music magazine, like, uh, you know, Computer Musician or something. Or if you even um, buy a book on music, uh, those are all deductible under educational expenses. And similarly, um, sort of the category of things of like keeping up with industry trends, uh, you know, it's sort of educational and deductible. So things like a Spotify subscription or going to a concert could potentially be uh, deductible. The next thing that is potentially deductible is the space in your apartment, your house, whatever. Um, basically, you can, if you use like, let's say you've got a, you know, four bedroom house uh, and you pay $1,000 a month for it, and one of the bedrooms is exclusively your recording studio, well, you can deduct $250 a month uh, as an expense for your studio. Um, and on top of that, you can also kind of divide your utilities, your insurance, all of that by the percentage of your property that is used for your studio or your rehearsal space or whatever. Um, so that can really be a big place of saving since most of us, our biggest expense is our living space. Another thing you can deduct is transportation and mileage. So whether you're driving to a gig, for example, or flying to a conference, 
these things are all deductible and TurboTax will help you figure out what rate to charge and all of that. Um, the important thing though is that you do have to track all of this stuff as it happens. Otherwise, it'll just be really hard to do at the end of the year. Um, and finally, potentially you can also reduce your income or reduce what you owe, uh, get a deduction for retirement savings depending on exactly what your situation is. Um, that's another just great way of reducing your income and getting some tax-free savings. So I really hope this was helpful. Again, this is not intended to be exhaustive. This is just, I know a lot of people aren't even thinking about taxes. So I kind of wanted to highlight a broad situation of where you need to pay taxes. I wanted to uh, tell you why you should be keeping track of your expenses to save you time at the end of the year and hopefully make your taxes easier to do and maybe avoid an audit. And then some of the most common deductions to help you save money and also just to keep, to give you some things to focus on when you're tracking your expenses. So if you've enjoyed this, please be sure to give it a like, um, share it with friends, subscribe. And also, um, again, if you want to get TurboTax, there's a link down below, an affiliate link. And then if you want to get more information and detail on this, um, there's a link to a web page I did where I really get into this in more detail. Um, and of course, again, I'm not an expert. I'm not trying to give you advice. I'm just trying to explain my experiences. You should definitely independently do your own research. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.